Welcome to the Cynthia Nyamai show. I am in Goma and I'll tell you why I decided to draw some inspiration from this place. In 2002, where we are seated right now, the beautiful Serena in Goma was nothing but rubble, ash, and people were in despair. But Goma picked itself up. People who are resilient started up new businesses with even more energy and better ideas. We will be speaking to a young entrepreneur who will tell us about her journey. Coming up shortly. Africa's young entrepreneurs keep moving their needle, taking bigger risks and expanding beyond the borders. 23-year-old Esther Bishweka is one of the biggest flower distributors in Goma DRC. She imports half flowers from Kenya and Rwanda. Not afraid to take risks, Esther opened a restaurant and plans to expand her businesses beyond the DRC. Esther says she owes her business acumen to living and growing up in Kenya and Uganda. Thank you so much, Esther Busheka, for joining us today. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Where did you grow up and what kind of childhood did you have? Hello, so like you said, my name is Esther Bishweka. I am 23 years old. I was born here and I le left Goma when I was 11 years old to go to Uganda, Rainbow International School. Yes. I stayed there till year nine mm -hmm. uh, for three years. So yeah. then I switched to go to Kenya in yeah. Brookhouse International School. Mm -hmm. And that's where I graduated from high school. And yeah. after that, I went to Switzerland yes. and I did hospitality management and tourism. And after Switzerland, I went to the UK and did my master's in sustainable agriculture and yes. food security yeah. and in 2020 that was in 2020 so I had to come back because of COVID and continued an online yes. studying yeah. and um, so after that that's when I decided to come back here and I was like what, what can I do here yeah. as I'm yeah. studying online yes. and that's when I decided to open my first business. business. Before you go to your mm -hmm. business uh, tell me a little bit about uh, growing up in different um, countries in the East African region? So um, I'm glad that I had all these changes when I was really young yes. because I realized you don't really take them as challenges. Yeah. But one that I had was the language barrier. barrier yes. When I went to Uganda, I did not speak English, yeah. but thank God that I learned fast in yeah. three months. I was in the first, after the first term, I already spoke some English, yes. but it was really hard because all my colleagues, my classmates, they did not speak English, uh, yes. French or Swahili. Yeah. And so because of that, I, I told myself and my parents, you know, motivated me to, to learn really quickly. Yeah. But for me, that was the only um, uh, bar challenge I had because in both schools, mm -hmm. in Uganda and Kenya, it was international schools. Yes. So all of us, we came from different backgrounds. Yeah. So when we came, we found each other. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So for me, I thought, I think it would have been a challenge if I went to like a strictly Ugandan school yes. and trying to integrate within their culture mm -hmm. or the same with Kenya. but. They are all international schools. Yeah. Even in Switzerland, we had 60 different nationalities mm -hmm. in our school. We were about 300 students in total. Yeah. And within that, we had 60 to 90 nationalities. Mm -hmm. So again, I did not find a challenge moving to a different continent yeah. because we're all coming for a, to, to have a new experience yeah. with new cultures and yes. new people. Yes, yeah. yes. But, but growing up, uh, I, and one thing about uh, DRC is people have this idea that, uh, and we see a lot uh, uh, in the news that there's war in, in Congo um, and conflict. How was it uh, growing up the last 20, uh, 21 years and the times that uh, you were in Goma? So for instance, most people thought that our parents sent us to different countries to, fly, to flee from uh, wars or yeah. conflict, but that wasn't the case. Mm. Um, when we talk about conflict, yes. it was always in the outskirts mm -hmm. and it's the media, sorry to say, always like portrays it more than it actually is what it is because I never remember one time flying away from Goma or running from Goma because I used to come every holiday and sometimes the conflicts will happen during holidays like Christmas holidays and so forth. So for us, we always said it was over exaggerated and that actually scared people from coming to Goma. It's actually now that people are coming, but also another reason that kept other people away was the volcano. Yes. Even people who are from Congo coming from different cities like yeah. Kinshasa, yeah. they always feared even when they come, they're sleeping that, uh, what if the volcano yeah. comes now? Yeah. But, but it's you not, would say you had a happy childhood. I had a happy childhood because we, we, yeah. it's like it's an inst 
we, we had the, we know we are not scared of the volcano. We know it can happen, but yes. not tomorrow or today. Yeah. And there are usually warnings. Yeah. For instance, the worst that ever happened was 2002, yes. because it destroyed the whole of Goma. Everything you're seeing, the roads, this hotel, it was nothing. Yes. Nothing was left. Wow. Only one part of Goma, which is like going towards Himbi, Katindo, yes. and also one side of town, yeah. did, not, did not get affected by the volcano. Yes. But majority people lost their properties mm -hmm. people lost their businesses their houses mm -hmm. we we had to start from scratch and especially my family all of us we we had to that was also actually um, a way for some people to start something new yeah. so for instance for us thank god not, not a lot was affected yes. but i know people who lost everything yeah. um, but that spirit mm -hmm. you know knowing to that you can build something again. from yes. yeah from from scratch yeah our parents adopted that spirit, mm -hmm. but also us, the, the next generation, the children, we also adopted that spirit. Yes. Everything you see in Goma, yeah. it was all made yes. by people in Goma. Yeah. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. People are so resilient that the spirit of entrepreneurship is within us because we see something like that can happen again, like it happened in May 2021. Yes. And so we're like, there we go again. Yeah. We have to start thinking. So when you make a business, you don't just make it for now, yes. you think, what if this happens? How are we going to make it? Mm -hmm. Then you start thinking of evolving in other cities. So yes. that's how we are. Yeah. And if you look at the story of Congo, Goma is outstanding. Now they're speaking about us before. Yeah. They did not speak about us because they only knew about wars. Yes. Because even people from Kinshasa, when they come, mm -hmm. first thing when they, oh, you're going to Goma, be safe. Be safe about what you've seen here. Yeah. <laughs> it's OK. Yeah. It's really OK. And um, I think it's the resilience and showing people that if we've come from this and we're able to do this, yes. then why not you? Yeah. yeah. Is that really resilience what has inspired you to start your business? Yeah. You're only 22 and you have a number of businesses. Yes, yeah, yes. that's really inspired me to, 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 have, uh, to open my own businesses mm -hmm. because one thing I've also seen here in Congo is people can leave legacies behind, yeah. but it's not the same as in the Western world, how even if they go generation and generation, yes. that's something that we need to learn. Yeah. And so I was like, I can teach that to my children yes. through my own businesses, yes. not through my parents' business. Yes. So that was the number one thing. Yeah. I've always wanted to do, hosp um, uh, to be an entrepreneur. Yes. So as soon as I finished school, because one condition my dad gave me, yes. finish school, then you can do whatever you want. Yeah. But he always wanted me to work with him, yes. no, for him, but yeah. I was like, we can work together. <laughs> I can do my own businesses, yeah. so yeah. Because like right now where we are seated, which is a very beautiful hotel, the Serena Goma Hotel, this is actually your family property. Yes. But you're not working here. No, I don't work you're here. You're running your own businesses yes. separately. Do you still get some capital from daddy or everything is on your own? So what he helped me with when I had my because every time I always give him business proposals, I'm yes. like, what do you think? Because he's my mentor, he, yeah. he's gone through everything, has the experience. Yes. So last year I presented like 10 or five business plans. He was like, no, no, no. Yes. And then this year, thank God, he, I proposed to him my first, well, my biggest business plan, which I have restaurant, I'll talk about it. Mm -hmm. And he said, oh, it's good because it also has a, a bakery yeah. and pastry. Mm -hmm. And he said, the only support he can give me, so that I feel like I also made it, yeah. was space. One of my restaurants, mm -hmm. he gave me space. It's yes. in his building. Mm -hmm. So that one, I'm not ashamed to say it. He helped me with that. Yeah. But the rest, it was money that I'd been saving because I also worked mm -hmm. when I was in Switzerland. Yeah. I went for an internship in the US. as was being paid well. Yeah. When I come here, I work in our other hotel. I gave them training. They paid me. Yeah. So it was all money I was saving up. Mm -hmm. And to continue to grow my businesses, because now, for instance, I have three restaurants yes. and opening the fourth one in January. Yes. How do I grow? I, it's the money I get today, the revenue I get, I put it back in the business. Yes. For instance, when I opened the first one, mm -hmm. my restaurant, I did not have everything that was necessary. Yes. But people didn't know this. Mm -hmm. For instance, I didn't have cap enough capital to buy the plates, yeah. the what, so I, I served in, in papers, you know, like uh, for yes. McDonald's or yes. Chicken Inn. Yes. And people didn't get the culture. And yeah. I was like, no, this is how you're going to be eating. But the reason was actually I didn't have enough. And I yeah. wanted to get good ones from South Africa. Yeah. So when I had enough money, after two months of opening, I went back and ordered in Africa and South Africa. Yes. So now we have in like the wooden plates. Yeah. So it's like that. That's actually one of the examples I give people. Mm -hmm. After some time, I got enough capital. I bought a car for delivery, and then I bought a new machine for pizza, which is quite expensive. But I had to wait yes. for money to be generated, and then I put it back. So for me, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna use 
I'll say I'm going to start using the profit or whatever I get from my businesses, maybe after a year or two, because now everything is literally going back. It's a whole cycle. It's going back so I can do this and do that. Yeah. yeah. And, and growing up, did you we used to watch your fa Because also your mom is into business. So yeah. did you wa watch them and always think, that when I grow up, I want to be like them? So, like, funny enough, I never used to pay attention to what they did. Yes. I only pay attention now, yeah. actually. Because as I grew up, I wanted to be an entrepreneur, but more for banking. Yeah. So for me, it was always banking, banking. Yeah. I didn't care about uh, yeah. hospitality or anything. Mm -hmm. So funny enough, we did an evaluation test yes. in high school before we went to uni uh, because I had applied for banking. And the first result that came, they're like, you're suited for hospitality. I was like, no, it's not possible. I'm so sorry. Yeah. It's not possible. Yeah. And then I did a second one. Banking yeah. came forth yeah. and oh, hospitality wow. came first, yes. sec twice. Yeah. So that's when I, I contacted an agency for Swiss schools mm -hmm. for hospitality in Kenya. And that's how I got admitted. Yes. And then that first holiday, after yeah. I knew I was suited for hospitality, mm -hmm. then I asked my dad if I could do an internship at his hotel. Yeah. So that's how I actually started working with him, knowing what he does. Yeah. And my mom is the one who motivated me to do agriculture because she's into agriculture. Mm -hmm. She has a coffee uh, brand. She yeah. does. Co she's into coffee, yeah. um, you know, and fish, mm -hmm. also. Um, and so last year when I came back here, yeah. uh, no, when I graduated from high school, I saw now I spend more time with her because I didn't spend time with my parents as I was in boarding. Yes. And when I came back here, it was for holidays, so I didn't really see what they were doing. Yes. But I spent time with my mom. I was like, oh, agriculture is, is the future yeah. of not only Congo, but the whole of Africa. Yeah. Why not? I, I want to find out a little bit more if you're, you feel like sometimes you're living under your family's shadow and your dad, who is a well-known businessman, and also your flower business, I suspect this ones are from Kenya we'll find out more after yes. the break Welcome back to the Cynthia Nyamai show. Today we are in Goma, the DRC, and I've met a young entrepreneur, Esther, who's been sharing with us her journey. And we want to find out a little bit more about the Kenyan connection. But Esther, your dad is well known in the DRC, a well known businessman. You still use his surname. Do you sometimes feel like you're under his shadow? No matter what your two people are yes. like, it must be her dad. Yes. yes. So, for instance, people I'm a very introverted person yeah. people don't know me uh, I'm like my dad people don't know him but they know him by the name yes. and so one day I just decided on LinkedIn because yeah. I'm big like I, I like LinkedIn I like networking yes. you don't know who you meet who yes. you fall on and um, so what they decided hmm, let me post my achievements yeah. and it went viral yeah. you are shared over maybe 1,000 times mm -hmm. same thing on Twitter actually yes. I'm new on Twitter and yeah. it went viral but the comments I was getting mm -hmm. on Twitter and LinkedIn was a bit okay, but on Facebook, yeah. people are like, oh no, uh, we're not going to congratulate you. We've yeah. already seen the, yes. the, the second name. So funny enough, yes. it was the minority that was against my success. Yeah. The majority were like, how many successful men are known here and how many of their kids have achieved what yeah. she's achieved? That's true. You know, yeah. you can, and then they told them, okay, you're talking about her, they're giving her money. If we give you that money exactly. now, will you, will you do what she's doing? Yes. You know, so yes. people are like, we're not going to congratulate you. Yeah. Some people actually make conspiracies of my dad working with the yes. former president Kabila. Yes. And so one person actually created a whole case on Twitter yeah. saying that this was Kabila's money we stole from yeah. the country. Yeah. And we're like, no, she's not even from here. She's from Kinshasa. It's yes. just jealousy. Yeah. So for my dad, he was really, he went to a hard time. He lost, yes. he didn't have anything because he was saying, I'm opening a hotel. I'm going to get all my money from here. Yes. But it, not even a month later, but mm -hmm. three weeks later, yeah. there was a volcano that took down everything in yes. a day. Yes. And so I that remember, was in 2002, yeah, I still yes. have the image of yeah. us running first to our hotel so that we could go through Randa, then yeah. Bukavu. Yeah. And my dad stayed. He yeah. was like, he didn't say he's going to leave us and yeah. burn with the hotel yeah. but he said until I see the lava coming yeah. I'll just because it's by the lake I'll just take a boat and I'll join you guys yes. but until then I'm not leaving here mm -hmm. and thank God it was not touched and from there because as we respect the UC so much because that's where all his other businesses were born from yes. and the same thing happened here in May yeah. he was here people ran away there were bad earthquakes yes. and he was just like nothing is going to happen until we see the lever coming yeah. he, he was prepared he had boats 
to take people to Bukavu. Yes, yeah. It was like, until then, I'm not going. Yeah. And so for me, he's actually my mentor. He inspires me. Mm. And so I want to be like that too for my children yes. and for my employees yeah. and show them that everything is fine. There are times my employees see we're not bringing in money, this and this, there are problems. And I tell them everything will be fine. Yes. But I go back home and cry and I say, God, I don't know what I'm going to do, yeah. but I still find a way one way or another. Yeah. The average age of my employees is 23 years old, just like me. Yeah. And 80% 80, 80 of the people who work for me are women, just because it's hard for them to find jobs. Once they finish school, they're all educated, but it's hard to find jobs here. Yeah. Unemployment um, is really high. Mm -hmm. The rate is really high, yes. and especially for girls. Men, you know, they're very hardworking. Mm -hmm. They can start selling parts of cars. They yes. can start, it's easy, but for women, it's, it's hard. Yeah. And also it's because of the trainings they get. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why also in this Congo, with time, I want to bring the idea of, you don't just limit yourself with what you studied. Mm -hmm. If the training's being offered here and there, do it because one day someone may need skills from that training and you did it, so yeah. you'll be employed. Yes. So that's what I, I, that's how I do it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, this lovely flowers, I can tell, they look like Kenyan. Yes. <laughs> yes. Tell me a little bit about um, your flower business and doing business with also other parts of um, the East African region. Did going to school um, around East Africa also help? Yeah, it helped a lot, mm -hmm. but uh, actually, my aunt, where I was staying, yeah. she used to be a florist. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I, when I was growing up, I just, if I have something in my head, I yeah. don't look left or right, I yeah. just focus. Yeah. So I never knew I'll do flower business. Mm -hmm. It was always like uh, banking. I'll see her doing flowers for the church. I'll be like, flower girl, <laughs> goodbye, <laughs> you know? And then last year, I realized I love flowers. Um, sometimes I have anxiety, yeah. but when I smell flowers, when I see flowers, it makes me happy. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, why not open a business? Yes. And I realized, people didn't have a shop here for flowers. Yes. I remember one time one woman told me, on Valentine's Day, there's even supermarket can't say, oh, let's put flowers around here yes. for people. There's nothing. Yes. So I was like, let me open that. Mm -hmm. But I first started with the, with an online store. Online meaning you just go on Instagram, you see the picture yes. and the number, you order, and then you pay through and pay or tell money. Yes. But now I'm planning to open a physical store. So now the flowers, unfortunately, we don't have farms here. Yes. Uh, people cultivate flowers in bulk, roses, or different flowers. Yeah. So at first I started getting from Rwanda. I don't go there myself. Mm -hmm. There is someone who gets in bulk there, yes. and then they come and sell it to people here. Mm -hmm. So I usually buy it from him, yes. uh, from Bella Flowers. So. These flowers I get, for instance, from Rwanda. Yeah. And now um, with the equity trading mission mm -hmm. that we had here in Goma, yes. uh, I was grateful to meet, yeah. uh, uh, I was grateful to meet uh, Calvin who came with the flower samples, so mm -hmm. flowers from Nairobi. Mm -hmm. And uh, he wanted to know how is the flower business here? How yeah. is the market? And to me, I was like, this is actually perfect to be getting from there because they're very good quality. Yeah. And um, we have a direct flight yes. from Goma to Nairobi, yeah. Jumbo Jet, mm -hmm. and they reassured to us that in, by January or February, there's gonna be a cargo yes. which can take up to uh, a thousand kgs, so yes. one ton of um, merchandise and stuff like that. Mm. So for me- So you're we, looking now to do business in Kenya. Kenya. trading flowers in Kenya, but mm. in the long term, why not have uh, my own farm yes. here? That's my long term goal, mm. to have my own flower farm here. Yes. But for now, I'm open to trading. In Rwanda, even the variety of flowers we get other than roses, they also get them from Kenya. Yes. So for me, I'm really excited because we're gonna have all these varieties of flowers. And later on, I'll, I'll show you how we set them up. Mm. For instance, here, we put our flowers and people say, ah, because it's a hotel, obviously they'll give you the market. No, yeah. before there was no one else who could do it. So I decided to give him, to ask them for the market to just do flowers for them because it looks nice. Yeah. yeah. Are you planning to maybe come to Kenya and learn a little bit more about yes. setting up? Yes, yeah, I want to yeah, come to Kenya and mm -hmm. visit a couple of farms and see how they are because here we have farm spaces yes. that are not exploited mm -hmm. and why not do farms? I'm very excited and you know to consult people who yes. sell plants yes. maybe who can sell to us here and then we can plant them mm -hmm. but also not just that but also florists professional florists who teach us about plants yeah. who teach us about we you know watering them mm -hmm. um, even when you've when you have this uh, yeah. how to put in a vase 
why a certain length, why removing, why is it important to remove leaves or to leave them, and how to wrap flowers, you know, and deliver them to people. The different, because each each flower color has um, its own speciality or has its own features. Like for instance, we don't have the orange roses here, but the orange roses are, are known to have a lot of don'ts. Mm -hmm. And uh, but you see the red ones, they do not have a lot. Yeah. But I'm sure the white ones, yeah, the white ones have a lot. You can see from down yes, here. Yes. But the red ones don't. So there are all those differences you need to know about the flowers, to learn, to learn about them, the temperature they should be kept in. So for me as as a business owner of flowers, I need to know that because I know I'll be there 24/7 yeah. selling them to people. Mm -hmm. I need to know that. So I can come back yes. and like, you know, explain to my people. Yes. I, I really admire your story and I'm wondering where do you get the boldness? Uh, you saw a, a business opportunity, there are no flowers um, on Valentine's Day. Where do you get the boldness and the guts to just start a business, see an opportunity and even if it means going to Kenya to learn more? The first one is re it's really funny. It's a, it's a quote of uh, the owner of Ford, I forgot his name. Mm -hmm. You know, Ford was the first car that was ever made yes. on earth. And pe before Ford was made, um, people asked him, what made you think that people would be willing yeah. to have, you know, the car? Mm -hmm. Okay, then it was not cars, but it was literally like, uh, how do you call them in French, is chariot? Uh -huh. Um, the with cat, wheels. The, yes, the cart. The cart, yes. voila. And they're like, how did you know that people would be willing to, to get into yes, this because yeah. he was like if I'd explain to people if I shown to people my business model yes. they wouldn't be welcoming to it yeah. but I realized people complain oh my horse is tired it's mm. getting me where I need to be late yeah. so I was like oh, let me do an innovation so I decided to create this yeah. and now it's getting people faster to their destination, yeah, yeah. 10 times faster, mm -hmm. and people love it. Yeah. So it's like, first you see their needs, yeah. you make them understand you need this, but you don't know. Mm -hmm. So that's what I do, you need this. Yeah. I tell them, like for instance, I'll sit down with people and or my uh, a partner and ask them, I need flowers, where are you gonna get them from? Yeah. Oh, maybe Kigali, it's so far, I need them now. <laughs> so I'm like, you see, that's why I need to open a flower yeah. business. Yeah. You see, yeah. you need to create in their mind, it's psychological, yeah. the need mm -hmm. for, uh, for, for something like yeah. there was no five star hotel in the east. Yes. People thought, ah, it's a very uh, place that it's a very, it has a bad reputation, yeah. this and this and that. But after they created it, yes. they actually made people believe you, you don't need to travel to Kinshasa yes. or to Kenya or to Nairobi mm -hmm. or, or to Kigali to find a five star hotel. Yes. You can yeah, find, it find it there. Goma. Yeah, so yes. that's why. Yes. And then, secondly, was my dad. Even yesterday, we had a speech and a talk, and he told me. Mm -hmm. If you want to succeed in business, go with what you have in your head. Do not listen to people. You can listen to them once you've set your business because mm -hmm. they can give you advice, financial advice and all that. But other than that, go follow your dreams. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. And who is Esther uh, beyond the business? What do you do during your free time, hobbies and, and so on? So to be honest, this year I have no free, free time. It's been the craziest year, yeah. but I love to travel. I, I love to travel a lot. I remember when I was in, high, in, in university, yeah. I used to per year, I would visit like 10 countries because yeah. I just love to travel. Yeah. Uh, now this year I didn't, unfortunately I only visited two countries, mm -hmm. but I love to travel. Other than that, I like to do uh, uh, charitable activities, com uh, pub, uh, com community service activities. Yes. Uh, like for now, I'm a national coordinator of a foundation yes. called Serge Bharati yes. Foundation. Yes. So I like to give back to the community. Mm -hmm. And other than that, I like to go out with my friends to restaurants, yeah. you know, and discover. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that's yeah. why I'm a bit, mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you so much, Thank Esther, you for too. joining us today and for sharing mm -hmm. your story. I've learned so much from you and we'll be following up later yes. on in life Yes. Um, when it comes to your businesses and also trading throughout the yes. East Africa. Isn't it interesting that we are all the same and especially the youth? They all have similar needs, but they are quite inspiring and have great ideas, which has been food for thought as we start the year. See you next time. <laughs>